G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy, my second attempt at a uh, return video uh, for the final series. Of course, I'm back and uh, did a little bit of warm-up video yesterday uh, where I talked about the Eagles, but now it's time to talk about stuff that is uh, actually relevant. And I'll talk a little bit about this uh, final series. I was going to say upcoming, but just because I have missed most of the first week of it doesn't mean it hasn't started yet. Obviously, I've just returned from Europe, uh, so I've had to do a fair bit of catching up on, you know, football. I was kind of following the scores while I was away, but still didn't really get a great picture of how things were actually going down. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to have a crack at ranking the six remaining teams of the final series in the order in which I think they can win the Premiership. So it's not a prediction as such, it's more just like ranking the the probability of each team winning the flag and the sort of the order in which I place them in terms of favoritism. It was a great first week of the finals though. I did a bit of catching up and uh, I saw a bits and pieces and I, that was enough for me to realize how good some of the games were. Uh, in fact, all four games were absolute rippers. And now we've seen two teams eliminated and we're down to the final six. So I'm just gonna try and order those in terms of how likely they are to win the flag. And it's not as simple as ladder position. I'll be considering a few factors when I look at this. Obviously you have to consider how good the team were over the course of the season but I guess you know their history in finals is also a factor I also like to look heavily at head-to-head -head and how teams compare against each other because sometimes you just get the wrong opponent at the wrong time or the right opponent at the right time and it can be critical to how deep you go into finals as always guys we are sponsored by manscape.com so for all your body grooming needs uh, do check out their website you get 20% off and free shipping on all their products if it's something you've been thinking about doing we got summer coming up it's time to get your your body summer ready so to speak um, I'll definitely be getting back into the manscaping now I'm back from Europe and uh, if it is something you've been thinking about and haven't pulled the trigger now would be a great time because I need to breathe some life back into this channel so I'll start from the bottom up and I'll start with the team sixth most likely to win the flag in my opinion or the least likely of the teams remaining and I'll start off with the Brisbane Lions who had a 15 and 7 win season and that's a pretty good record in 2016 we saw uh, the Bulldogs I believe win with that record and I think Richmond in 2017 might have done the same thing a pretty good win-loss record and uh, certainly often by itself uh, good enough to win a premiership in theory. They had a pretty encouraging first week of the finals. You know, they sort of had a luckluster end to the season, obviously getting annihilated by the Demons at the Gabbro in particular, and um, plenty had doubts on how they would come out against Richmond, but we saw possibly the best game of the final series so far. Went goal for goal all game, and they ended up in front at the end, progressing through to a semi-final against the Demons at the MCG. So this is a huge hurdle for Brisbane first up. Uh, and now by my math as well, they're going to have to win three games at the MCG to win the Premiership. Historically, not a great MCG side. And that's evidenced further by the fact they got, you know, beaten easily by the Demons early this year there. And also the fact that in the final round, the Demons smashed them in Brisbane as well. So not a great MCG side and uh, historically not good against the Melbourne Footy Club either. So for them to even get past the next week of the finals, I am pretty skeptical. And obviously in recent years, they've shown an inability to, to win big finals. And I think last week was their first win of a uh, sudden death or elimination final, so to speak, under Fagan. So it doesn't mean they can't do it. Every year we see, or some years we see a surprise where you know an elimination finalist sort of progresses through to a prelim. I just don't see it with Brisbane. And while I think they're closer to the top four in terms of overall quality week to week, their ability to win this final and then win two more after that, I don't see it. So for me, they're the least likely team to win the Premiership. The fifth most likely team to win the Premiership uh, is Fremantle, in my opinion, who had a 15-6 and one draw season. So again, a pretty good record and of course, finish higher than Brisbane for a start as well. They are the youngest group out of these finalists. In fact, they're a very young side. It's astonishing how good they are for such a young group, actually. Last week, overcoming a very poor start, you would have to say, trailing the Bulldogs by 41 points to end up winning by 13 points. A great club win. I think when assessing Fremantle's chances in this final series, what does work in their favor is they've claimed some really big scalps this year. Most notably, they've beaten two of the bigger sides in the competition. They beat Geelong in Geelong mid-year and then uh, had a 38-point win against the Demons at the MCG, who were at that point undefeated as well. So what we're seeing is a group here who has the mentality that they can win anywhere at any time. And you contrast that with a Brisbane who has been a very consistent side over the last few years, haven't been able to take those scalps. So that's what, to me, makes Fremantle a little bit more dangerous than Brisbane. Similarly though to Brisbane, they will have to win three games away from home, uh, two of which will be at the MCG. And if they win this week, uh, 
they would go to Sydney to play the Swans in a prelim. So while I think they're a little bit more likely than Brisbane, I think that's still a bit much of a tall order for this young Fremantle side, but they've surprised us at various points this year. It would be pretty crazy, uh, but I still think they're the second least likely side to go all the way. Then the fourth most likely side, in my opinion, is actually the reigning premiers, the Melbourne Football Club, who went 16-6 and six and finished top two, of course, but last week went down to the Swans for the second time this year at the MCG uh, by about four goals, I think it was, in the end, and now have to do it the hard way by hosting a semi-final this week against Brisbane to earn a chance to play Geelong in a prelim. I've had this quiet faith, uh, which I think is understandable, that the Demons would sort of lift for the big occasion. Certainly in the last round of the season, we saw them come out and blow Brisbane away. I really thought that was a sign of things to come that Melbourne were lifting for that finals level intensity uh, of maybe the week off didn't help them but I think they just got undone by the Swan side that knows how to beat them and this is where I go back to the head-to-head -head is really important in my opinion I think for me what contrasts Melbourne this year to last year I mean they had the same sort of issues last year you know in the middle of the year they started to break down a little bit their mid forward connection before ultimately coming good at the right time at the end of the year the other thing that works against them is last year despite losing some winnable games they were generally pretty good against the top sides. I think they beat Geelong three times last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they beat Brisbane, all those other good sides last year. Whereas this year, they've kind of been undone by those best sides in the competition when it counts. This year, they've lost to Fremantle at home. They've lost to Geelong. They lost to the Swans twice, both times at the MCG. And of course, lost to Collingwood twice at the MCG as well. So we know what their best form looks like and they're absolutely a chance to win the flag. But for me, that's a bit of a red flag when they've consistently failed to beat the sides they're going to be coming up against late in September. I think they'll do the Lions this week, but then they'll have to play the Cats at the MCG in a prelim. Still a decent chance, but then a grand final against the Pies and Swans. Both teams have beaten them twice this year, so I think Melbourne have slipped in my rankings. Then for me, the third most likely side to win the Premiership, and this is strange considering they lost their first week of the finals, but I'm going to go with Collingwood, who had a very impressive 16-6 and six win season. They started the year up and down. I think there were two wins, three losses. Somehow lost to my mob West Coast uh, before they had a dream run of close wins. And uh, to finish in the top four with a percentage of 104%, I don't know if that's happened before. That is extremely rare and really demonstrates how close some of their wins were. Their ability to win those tight, close, close games is really compelling. They've obviously got a mentally strong side. The product of such a record there will also play a role in finals. When games are close, they'll have the belief that they can win. As it happened on the weekend, Geelong got the better of them in a tight tussle, um, but Geelong is probably the benchmark of the competition. So I don't think they'll lose too much confidence. They've gotten close to Geelong twice this year. This week, they'll have to get past Fremantle at the MCG, a side who they beat by six goals in Perth earlier this year, albeit in the wet. So I think they'll be good there. Then a prelim would be against the Swans in Sydney, where they lost early this year and that that is only one sample size just losing to the Swans in Sydney doesn't mean they'll lose again and I do think they are big game players I think that's evidenced by their record this year and their performances in big close games so I think they're a decent chance of getting all the way to the grand final they'll probably be hoping they come up against the D's who they've beaten twice this year rather than the Cats or Swans but still I still think Collingwood are a decent chance to knock off any of those sides on the right day one thing that may mitigate them a little bit is fatigue factor you know playing all these close games over a long period period of time this year. It would be both physically and probably mentally draining as well. So I'll be very, very impressed if they make it all the way to the last weekend in September. But for me, on what they've produced this year, the third most likely side to win the flag. Shooting up my rankings to be the second most likely side to win the Premiership after their very impressive win on the weekend. I've got the Sydney Swans who again finished the season with a 16 and six record and finished third overall. To me, I think they've slipped under the radar. I'll admit, I haven't really rated Sydney as a genuine flag contender this year. They seemed like a really good, encouraging team on the rise that was plucky and capable of beating the best sides on their day. But now they've earned a home prelim, so you have to genuinely consider them one of the major players this season. Following their really impressive win against the Demons, who they've beaten twice at the MCG this year, which is a huge plus. The fact that they can win at the MCG is compelling for an interstate side. They then have a home prelim against Collingwood or Fremantle. You don't need me to tell you that they're a very fast and skillful side, capable of cutting teams apart. A really entertaining team to watch. And I think the fact that they've beaten the Cats once this year will also play into their favour a little bit in terms of a mental edge. Again, it was one game and it was in Sydney. This game will be the MCG if they play the Cats in the grand final of course but still like I said you have to weigh in my opinion heavily the factor of how can they compete against the best teams in the competition and Sydney are ticking that box for me they've earned a home prelim in my opinion they're more likely to win that prelim than not so by default I have to have them as the second most likely side to win the premiership and they can 
certainly win the whole thing. Finally, this will probably come as no surprise, I'm going to go with the Geelong Footy Club as the most likely side to win the Premiership. They finished on top with an 18-4 and record, which was two wins clear of the next best side. They've clearly earned favouritism, and then they've won week one of the finals by beating a very good side in Collingwood and earning a home prelim. And when you consider how good Collingwood have been in close games, and Collingwood were playing well on the weekend, just the fact that they beat Collingwood in a thriller is impressive in itself. Yeah, you know, it's amazing that this side has been so consistent and resilient over the last decade when everyone thinks they're going to drop off they almost seem to get better then they'll sort of you know falter into sort of the middle part of the top eight before bouncing back into premiership contention and I think very few people wanted to admit that they, Geelong would be good this year I think a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon of oh they're going to drop down because they're old and here they go they go 18 and 4 and in the box seat with a home prelim not only are they in the box seat and won 18 games this year but they've also passed the major test they've beaten the Demons twice this year last year obviously the Demons beat them as I said I think it was three times and they also beat Collingwood twice in two close games as well they did lose to Sydney in Sydney and they lost to Fremantle at home but this stage not enough for me to really have concern over them as the premiership favorite. If anything I think Geelong's biggest vulnerability is you know over the past few years they've kind of stumbled at some sort of finals hurdle whether it be games that they're expected to win and they drop or games that just don't show up to at all in in particular last year's prelim I think they got annihilated by was it 80 points or something like that. So there is a chance that Geelong don't deliver on the expectation which has been a little bit of a trend in recent seasons but at this stage Stage, you cannot possibly make a strong argument that they're not the premiership favorite so they're gonna have a prelim against the demons at the MCG in my opinion it will be the demons anyway it could be the Lions and then on grand final day it's it's hard to back against them but we'll see it really depends on who their opponent is but it's gonna be a very exciting rest of the final series guys let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with my rankings and who's your overall prediction I didn't get a chance to do a prediction at the start of the final series those videos usually bang so that's unfortunate but uh, that's more or less how I see it playing out probably most likely Geelong and Sydney grand final but we will see guys but yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video cheers